Hello everybody. I wanted to share with you today the tools I carry in my truck. It was recently washed and I removed all my tool bags I have inside. The truck I'm using is a 2004 Ford F250 4x4 with a 5.4 liter engine. I purchased it in December 2017, pre-owned with 183,000 miles. It already had the bumper, winch, and emergency lights installed. The rear seats have been removed to make room for all my tool bags. I tried to make use of all available space such as the underside of the seats. I have a fire extinguisher for emergencies, which thankfully I've never had to use before. I carry a special set of drill bits for stainless steel. I use these in restaurant kitchens for repairing equipment. Stainless steel is very difficult to cut through, a dull bit will never make it. I have a few boxes of extra bits I keep on hand. But I have another place for the ones I use daily. I also keep boxes of different types of screws or nails I'm using for specific jobs. Eventually this will end up in the big box of screws later when I'm done. I carry a small paint roller for touch-ups. These are my favorite drywall anchors. They are extremely durable, super easy to work with. I use these drill bits on everything I do. They take a good beating and sharpen up very nicely. I keep white and clear silicone for kitchen and bath repairs. This hammer is new addition. Sometimes I need a soft mallet for delicate things. This spool of string is mostly used for masonry work like leveling cement blocks. I have a couple of stud finders. This is my second most used. I keep a small drive socket set. This one is great for appliances and small car parts or hard to reach areas. This bottle has degreasing acid for cleaning up things soap and water can get rid of. Zip ties, Gorilla Tape, Wrap Tape, Yellow Tape. This is my favorite adhesive. This stuff is strong and will adhere to anything you apply to it. That's all really worth mentioning in this bag. I also carry a small bottle of soap for cleaning things up as well as washing my hands. This cutting fluid is amazing for stainless steel or cutting through thick metal. It prevents the bit from overheating as well as providing lubrication. This is where I keep my various sanding sheets. Some are for wood and metal, but the good stuff here are these sanding screens. I work with a lot of drywall and these screens allow me to use a vacuum sander to keep dust to a minimum. I have owned many flashlights in the past, but this is the one that has stayed with me the longest. I like how it uses the same batteries as my other tools. The light is super bright and it uses very little power. It has a foldable hook that you can use to hang it where you need it. This is a roll of galvanized wire. It's extremely strong but yet pliable enough to bend to make a hook to fish electrical wires or to hang picture frames. Here is another stud finder. I keep this one as a spare. I don't actually use it that often. Got a beat up measuring tape here. I like these smaller ones because they are easy to work with. I have a respirator for when I'm sanding drywall or cutting wood. I buy spare cutting wheels for my grinders. I tend to break them or drop them a lot. This one is really good for brick, cement blocks, and tiles. I have these drywall anchors for more heavy duty load capacity, like large shelves. Gorilla wood glue is a must for any tool bag, make sure to get one. The adhesives I use sometimes leave very sticky residue if I'm not careful. This stuff is very powerful. It will remove anything you spill or to remove marker lines. This is aluminum tape for repairing AC ducts or vents. I use these masonry anchors for block walls or brick. Random roll of clear tape. More galvanized wire. This one is thin and more bendable. Now this is a special tool for one purpose. It helps you to very quickly cut the holes for attaching a doorknob to a new door slab. I don't use it a whole lot but it saves me a lot of time when I do. That's really all that's worth showing in this bag. I just got a few wire connectors and random little things. Now this is my favorite stud finder. It picks up studs very quickly and displays very easily where they are. It has become one of my most trusted tools. I go through knife blades very quickly so I keep a pack of them to replace them as I need them. I have a bag here of drywall screws I recycle. I don't like throwing them away when I can just reuse them again to install new drywall. Extra wide painter's tape, WD-40, true blue pipe thread sealant. This is my go-to pipe thread sealant for anything that carries water. 
I only use it when the rubber gasket on the connections has worn thin or it's no longer watertight. I have a small and large drywall filing tool like this. This is a mesh tape, slightly thicker than drywall tape. I use it with rapid setting mortar. I have a backup non-contact voltage tester. This is a must for electrical work. More knife blades. This is an attachment for my shop vac to suck water out of different size pipes. And again, just random things in the bottom of the bag. And I usually keep soapy water in a spray bottle. You can clean things up with it or use it to find leaks in airtight connections and fittings. All the tools in this bag have paid for themselves many times over with the work I've been able to do with them. First, I have this angle grinder that will rip through anything. I use it on tile, bricks, and blocks, resurfacing concrete or cutting through metal. There are many wheels and cups you can use this with, a true handyman's tool. Next, I have a reciprocating saw. Though this particular model had a severe flaw because the head of the tool was attached with screws that would come loose, I replaced the screws and added nylon lock nuts to keep them from loosening. After that issue was resolved, it has become quite a useful tool for me. And finally, I have a Makita multi-tool. As the name suggests, this tool is essential for any handyman or DIY enthusiast. Just like the angle grinder, this tool has a variety of blades that you can attach to it. I use it to notch out holes in places the angle grinder or the recipo saw can get into or cutting door casings flush to a new tile or engineer floor. If you've been thinking about getting a multi-tool, I highly suggest it. This is the container where I keep my electrical wiring nuts as well as some of the other electrical tools I use. White electrical tape, red electrical tape, staples, outlet tester, non-contact voltage tester black electrical tape, and different size wiring nuts. This is a new tool I started to carry with me. Before I purchased this, I would use a very old and very heavy skill saw. Because of the bulkiness and because it was corded, I couldn't always use it when I needed it. One day, Makita had a sale at Home Depot and they were selling the tool for 300 plus two free batteries. So not only did I get the tool for less than retail price, but also two additional batteries. It wasn't until I bought it that I realized how great it is to have a saw like this on hand. I have a table saw and chop saw, but I can't always bring them with me on jobs. That's where this tool has been pulling through for me. I can quickly cut 2x4s or other materials that would take much longer and be less accurate if I were to do them with a hand saw or other tool. It was quite the investment, but if I had to do it again or if I somehow lost the tool, I would definitely buy it again. In this bag, I carry the bulk of my hand tools. I'm not going to go over them because it's just things like screwdrivers, wrenches, filers, and random things I have acquired to help me get the job done. I try to keep it light, but it's a challenge to select a few that I really need with me at all times. There is one more item I keep inside the truck, and it's this very handy endoscope. I got this one on Amazon for very cheap. This is another tool that you won't always be using, but it will make things so much easier when you do need to use it. This is great for looking inside walls if you need to route electrical wiring, or if you just need to see what's inside, it uses Wi-Fi and an app to download on your phone to see what the camera is looking at. Has a dimmable light and a few attachments, definitely worth it. And now I present to you my bread and butter, the meat and potatoes, the real workhorses of my collection of tools, something I would not be able to work without my impact driver and drill. Both of these tools have been put to hundreds of hours of use and most jobs I've done would just not be possible without them. Definitely the two tools I will recommend to any homeowner or anyone looking to get into DIY projects. Now the impact driver and drill are only as good as the bits you have for them. So this is a place where I carry my collection of drill bits for any hole, wide or small, that needs to be made in wood, metal or block, I carry bits for it. I don't like using plastic and I will always put down cloth where I can, but sometimes you need to use the plastic to completely cover things. I always try to reuse plastic wherever possible and I roll them up in a bag to use later. And now here are some other items that I have on hand. Gloves, hand saw, hand sander, Bosch spade bit set, caulking gun, dustpan, squeegee, paper towels, drywall tape, back brace, stainless steel mud pan and drywall knives, safety flag, ratchet tie down strap, coronavirus wipes, 
water meter key to shut off water to the house. I carry these boxes when I'm doing a lot of framing and I need different size screws. Most of the time I will just carry a box of two and a half inch screws for typical repairs and recycle drywall screws you saw earlier. I have a large box for typical wood framing and the smaller box holds my masonry screws. Everything I have shown you so far is usually things I will always carry inside my truck. The reason I have those tools there is because the back of my truck is reserved for the larger items which typically change day to day as I start new jobs or progress through bigger ones. Right now you see I have drywall boards because that's what I'm going to be putting up today. Tomorrow I'll have two buckets of joint compound, a couple knives and the mud pan to spread the material. And the day after that I'll have a bucket of primer and paint, rollers and so on. Here is a video I took on the following week. I was going to install two door frames and as you can see now I have my compressor there in the corner, my nail guns, shop vac and everything else I will need for the job. Let me show you some of the things I keep at home but that I will sometimes take on the job when it's necessary. I use a table saw a lot at home when I'm working on doors or window frames. It's very bulky to take with me but if I'm doing a big framing job I won't hesitate to take it. Same thing for the miter and chop saw. I use it a lot at home and if I'm taking the table saw with me most likely the miter saw is coming with me as well. I have two welders. Both are wire fed. The red Lincoln Electric has flux core wire inside while the blue miller is using wire with argon gas. If I need to repair RV gate or metal fencing I will take the Lincoln because of the flux core which means I don't need to take the large tank of gas to use it. When I'm doing bathrooms or large floors I will take this wet saw to the job site and park it there for the duration of the job. This is a Chicago Electric wet saw which is a Harbor Freight brand and it's the only wet saw I have owned in the last 10 years. This is a 14 foot dump trailer. This is what I bring day one of kitchen and bathroom remodels or any other job that will have a large amount of debris to throw away. If you made it to the end, thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe and give a thumbs up if you want to see what's inside my 20 foot storage container.